So, you know, from a cost benefit, and I'm going to sound quite biased here, there's an immeasurable amount of returns, particularly when you're able to control uh, at least the expectations of the market. So, like, again, it's medicinal, so it's not like, I guess the government is allowing people to go and buy a five bag and, and consume, you know. It's going to be done also in a form that allows you to take it in liquid form, you know, uh, where you're being able to, to enjoy the benefits because there are some benefits for consuming THC. Uh, and, you know, those are immense when you look at the amount of non-communicable diseases in Barbados. And if it were that the alternative or the option was there to allow a large percentage of our adult population to access some of the best medicine for uh, certain afflictions, cataract, you know, when it comes to pain management, particularly those who are heavily afflicted by cancer. I'm not a medical person, but this I do understand. You know, you pretty much, at this current time, if you're looking at the local market, robbing people from having the best quality of life that they can, even things like herbal tea in this sense, really, really uh, provide a lot of benefits. I, I looked at it as a way of, of expanding health and wellness sectors, which is a rather significant portion of our productive economy. And agriculture as well, too, from the cultivator's point of view, those cultivator licenses. And, you know, truth be told that there's a lot of investment, and this I learned as time went on, that goes into the cultivation aspects, not just setting up in a field somewhere because somewhere because the spores that come off of some plants, particularly if someone for some reason decides to grow hemp, hemp isn't necessarily covered in this current dispensation. You know, the spores that come off of those plants can be fairly damaging to other plants nearby. So you would have to set up greenhouses. So it calls for a significant um, investment when it comes to infrastructure. If you want the industry to be viable, not from being able to provide a healthy alternative in terms of its byproducts for the local market, but more importantly, uh, export, because the real money is in the export opportunity or the re-export. You know, I somewhat differ from, I guess, some others in the industry where I see more of an opportunity to do production and manufacturing and, and, and shipping and reshipping and export and transportation more so than the cultivation. Particularly if you're looking at a short payback period, that is if you want to make a return on your investment in a smaller period, it might not be the largest return because for me, cultivation, but then again, cultivation might not produce the biggest return, definitely. But for most persons, the knowledge base is in the cultivation right now and not necessarily the bulk products. And, you know, so if you had to look at the opportunities that reside in health and wellness, the opportunities that reside in agriculture. It has been proven that agriculture in this country can grow. Uh, it, it took a pandemic for us to really recognize that fact. But it, it's not going to be monumental in the short term. Again, there's a massive amount of investment and then there's the whole, I guess, cost of trying to ensure that you create products that are, are easily absorb by the market. In other words, there are no issues with the manufacturing process. There are no issues with the growing process that could lead to further complications with health in the long term. And furthermore, again, I mentioned the infrastructural costs that will go into definitely the cultivation aspect, but also more importantly, we're going to the manufacturing as well, the, the whole planning behind the manufacturing, setting up of operations, ensuring that everything meets health and safety standards and protocols. So from a dollars and cents perspective, it's going to be costly, but um, the opportunity is immense nonetheless and could provide returns that definitely would overshadow a lot of what we have currently. Uh, definitely, I think, you know, if we do it right, it can very well mirror tourism when it comes to a return on investment perspective. It might not be as large as tourism. Maybe in the near future, the industries will marry. Persons will come here for access to health and wellness products that could be provided here. And furthermore, it could even be a case where you can export because of it, uh, just like Blue Mountain Coffee in a sense. 
uh, in Jamaica. You tie it into the culture and you're able to export a premium product because of the, I guess, the area where it was grown and the climate and the culture of coffee in Jamaica, for, for instance. Uh, you see, so it's very early days. The other costs as well, I didn't mention. Uh, you definitely, given the risk tolerance or lack of the, of the commercial banks have to factor in the case that you pretty much might be unbanked in the earlier instances. And that's something I know that the BCLA has been really lobbying very hard against. Um, they've been trying their best with respect to educational opportunities. And for those banks and those financial institutions, and luckily for us in the Caribbean, given early sentiment by Biden, the Biden administration in the United States of America, it's pretty easy for me to say, well, maybe in two or three years at the federal level, they were very well decriminalized medicinal marijuana in particular. And might go as far as to even uh, looking or exploring recreational marijuana as well too, and other byproducts in terms of legality, total legality. Now, insofar in the States, you know, you've got medicinal usage pretty much legalized most recently in Virginia. And for a few of them, it's just totally legalized and for the most part decriminalized when it comes to recreational usage. So uh, the reason I mentioned it by the administration is that, you know, everything that these commercial banks do here is all about reducing the likelihood that they would become unbanked themselves uh, when it comes to corresponding banking relationships. They don't want to be able to lose those corresponding banking relationships with the likes of Bank of America and Chase. And that's important because it's linked to our ability to trade, our ability to invest in massive amounts of um, massive amounts of opportunities, capital projects. Our money flows through these guys, pretty much. So that's a, that. If, so from the cost benefit perspective, you know, there's risk, uh, but the outcome, considering it's a new industry, considering the upside that is repeatedly spoken about worldwide, the fact that we chose to look at medicinal more so than recreational really allows us to capitalize on our enormous opportunity. Trend, 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 trend. Answer the call and let me do this one like a basketball and bounce back, bounce back. School open up and we going back. Bounce back, bounce back. Make sure your school books in the hammer sack. Bounce back, bounce back. Positive attitude must be intact. Bounce back. Be vigilant and be on track Yes, enjoy your learning when you go back to class One, two, three, four, five, do your math Any test that you should give you, work hard and pass Full marks every time, smile and laugh Respecting your teachers, that's the right path Bet your parents proud, that's the next half Returning to school, happiness, full blast Protocol still on the broadcast So make sure that you sanitize and put on your mask And bounce back, bounce back School open up and we going back Bounce back, bounce back Again, I, I pretty much worked along with the BMC earlier to decide what those fees should be. And it was all about positioning the jurisdiction, really, and also understanding that Barbados, under the leadership, um, well, the BMC earlier, under the leadership of Dr. Knight, um, that she was envisioning a more responsive type of regulation or regulatory regime. Sorry to use that word regime so many times, but it really comes up. In, in, in matters like this. But it, it, the fact of the matter is this. C to sale software, no other regulator, as far as I know, within the Caribbean presents that, well, at least the level of what Dr. Knight wants in terms of the ability of the regulator to track everything that's produced. Right? You don't want any stone unturned. And this isn't about grabbing tax dollars, really but it's more so a case of presenting to other companies that we, that there's nothing illicit, or even if there's something illicit, it's so insignificant that you don't have to worry about a tampered shipment, right? Of, of, of some medicinal cannabis or some dry cannabis that might've been sent off to Europe for further manufacturing or production processes. 
you know, or, or for any R and D that like you don't have to worry about it being changed because we have the software, we have the infrastructure that allows us to track from point A from the time this thing is produced or imported to the time that it, these, these shores are, it's consumed to be track everything. We track vitality, we track the quality, we track the integrity of the processes and something like that costs a lot. <laughs> you would imagine it, and for a country of just under 300,000 people, uh, when you really put the dollars and cents to a system like that, it is rather a lot. But the opportunity that we explored earlier, you and I, we discussed it. It, 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 it could be immense in the future if we really present ourselves as the right type of jurisdiction to do business with in this field. So uh, at the end of the day, those costs allow the regulator to function, one. Number two, fortunately or unfortunately, the IMF, has been our savior in terms of capitalizing government over the last few years, and even more so now that we are at the tail end one hopes of this pandemic. Ah, so the problem here is that the IMF pretty much made the government agree that statutory corporations, the likes of, for example, in this case, uh, be a DMC, be a DMC, be a MC, which is a parent company in a sense of the BMCLA. Uh, you know, the BNOC, the so Barbados National Oil Company, BNTCL, uh, which was, I, I might have been sold, but I'm not even sure if that has gone through. I lost touch with that one. But the, but the whole point is the like water authority, all of these guys normally, or the majority of them, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, for example, receive a subvention every year. And that costs the government a lot. And that was one of the main things I'm not going to get into the reasons why these subvention is so huge, but those were the main issues behind why the government ended up in a significant amount of debt. An opportunity like this where, number one, even though you would have wanted to start early, it would have taken you, in reality, much more time to get it right. Number two, it's in a risky area, uh, which could have led to, if the government didn't establish some sense of independence, you know, more government financial resources being unbanked or it becoming a bit more difficult for the government even to acquire uh, stuff from overseas, important stuff for the purpose of building roads, for instance. It would have become a little more problematic. And that's my assumption, right? So fundamentally, um, the government had to establish right early on that from the day you guys start issuing licenses, you know, you got to do it on your own. You have to be able to afford to be a regulator. You have to be able to be more like the FSC, which pretty much survives off of, um, and the, the, I think there was another regulator associated with the Central Bank that survived off of these fees that were charged to the banks and the financial institutions of which they regulated. You, you have to be more like that. You have to be in a position that, you can independently acquire your own funds act quickly. Um, don't, you don't have to wait for the government purse to turn over in order to do things to allow us to continue to compete as a jurisdiction. So these things come at cost. And it's just that because Barbados wants to do it right and has every intention from what I understand of doing it right, that you had to place yourself with a particular set of fees. We would never be as low as Jamaica. In fact, Jamaica being so low has caused it not to function that well. And they're now getting over some initial mistakes that luckily for Barbados, we can learn from. And they like to say, Vincent, they're slightly cheaper than we are. And they managed to attract, and this is me speaking independently, you know, interest that didn't really turn over to actual licenses being issued. They had a lot of, uh, a good set of money. I think it was reported around 15 million EC of potential license fees as soon as the regime was launched. And nobody really did anything. <laughs> this was before COVID. They did nothing with it. So they weren't attracting to my money very serious players or players that had the capital capacity to commit. So you want to manage expectations in something like this. You want to attract people that are going to do it right. You want to attract a massive amount of investment, even if it's local. You want to, I guess, the word, the next word that comes to mind is inculcate or encourage a type of behavior, even for the small man, as we like to say in Barbados, 
to say, well, this is something serious. I've got to pay my taxes. I got to be here. got to be willing to offer information up to the regulators. I have to expect that these guys are going to work with me because whatever I produce, it can affect things downstream. It can stop exports from going out. It could also cause the banks to be risk. You know, if I don't, if I, as a participant, one participant, don't do it right. So it's about attracting serious players. It's about attracting serious business models. And frankly, I, I would want to encourage, considering the amount of risk inherent in this business, huh, is medicinal. They're not talking recreational right now. Uh, that, that anybody that wants to cultivate, as I told a couple of guys I grew up with, I grew up in Charnox. And it's not a wealthy place, but or even could be considered middle class by any stretch of the imagination. And I told a bunch of those guys because they would have found out that I had something to do with it. I said to them, look, I want you guys to do it. Do it together. Not one man, two man, three man. It makes no sense because you need to be able to not just acquire the land, but ensure you get the accountants and you get the lawyers involved. You got to get this thing right. It is a tremendous opportunity with great upside. And the more people that do it right and understand that it's not um, not to put down any roadside vendor, but it's not a roadside business. Uh, and Because frankly, if you run it like that, you lead yourself and the country into significant issues long term that can stop you from putting food on your table, even in an unrelated job, just because of the risky. As much as it might have been frustrating for incumbents, persons who would want to grow, persons who would want to produce byproducts, persons who would want to transport, import, export, persons who would want to do research and development. And, you know, the fact that we've gone on a year since it was supposed to be pretty much that medicinal marijuana was decriminalized and legalized in Barbados. Um, I think that the pandemic and Barbados having taken its time was a blessing, considering that a lot of instances of regimes across the globe that are into medicinal marijuana, they've done legalized stuff they've been doing so for years are still cutting their teeth or there's a lot of large players particularly Canadian investors that move very early outside of Canada into different regimes um, like Jamaica and whatnot where you see and American investors and you're seeing a lot of investment related problems and financial related issues uh, tied into yes the, the fact that the those businesses would be un and underbanked and not being given the rights or a level of commitment that is necessary for their businesses to stay afloat, even though they're willing customers. And, you know, the industry is sorting itself out. It reminds me a lot in a strange way of cryptocurrency and how cryptocurrency, there was a group of evangelists that pretty much were much maligned. I remember 2013, 2014, when Bitcoin first crashed. It was like everybody said, oh, get over this, never touch it again for that reason. And yet, you know, we're here fast forwarded to 2021 and there's been so much education and also proof of concept. Uh, so much more successes over the last 10 years than failures that now it, like Fortune 500 companies are becoming involved in it. So it calls for a lot more mistakes to be made. This is what I'm saying within medicinal marijuana in regimes that cover small, uh, not closed economies, small open economies that are quite vulnerable to the winds of change. And uh, it just so happens that our environment, even if you grow cannabis within um, greenhouses or within very controlled environments, you can still, with the right capital investment, get a lot more yield and return on on investment than if you had to grow it in cold Canada where you had to do a lot more climatic controls than, than not. So for me, it's early days. And if you're able to establish yourself as a very successful player that has value, and this is why the, I guess, the fees, the license fees are positioned in the way that they have been listed, right? It's all about communicating to both local and international investors that, you should demand your money's worth from the regulator and you should expect to get your money's worth if you do the right things by the regulator being involved in your business in a way that doesn't typically happen outside of finance. 
You know, it's only in banking that you get regulators that interface so often with um, companies, with banks, and, and investment banks and hedge funds and to a lesser extent. You know, you get that, that very robust type of regulation that they find to be choking, but it keeps the system sturdy and afloat. Um, perfect example would be the GameStop investment, uh, I guess, opportunity that presented itself early this year, where that was just a case of market failure. And just as to market failure, every and anybody was making money off of something that was worth nothing, really. And that presented market failure and regulators, much to the disappointment of many uh, uh, average Joe, they intervened. But to me, that is what markets are supposed to do. They're supposed to correct and correct swiftly. And we don't have that those types of mechanisms in the Caribbean where regulators are that swift outside of finance to ensure uh, a, a very sturdy, I guess, presentation of an opportunity. So for me, the fact that the license fees are a lot, or seemingly, they're not expensive to me because I did the study myself, right? But, uh, you know, they give or present the opportunity for the Barbados government to get it right when it comes to being swift, being held accountable, being able to have the personnel and the equipment to outcompete any other jurisdiction in terms of responsiveness and in terms of investor satisfaction and whatnot. I just hope the government is able to get it right given the playing field that they set for themselves.